Welcome everyone, this is Master's Joke, also Master's Joke 75 on Instagram. So I've been getting back into my Lego, so I've just built a, <laughs> just built a Lego Lamborghini and I've got loads of Lego sets to build, so I thought, I thought I'd have a look at the, uh, the Doctor Who Lego set from 2015, just to see how much it's worth these days, because they say Lego's an investment, and I bought this set back in the day I, I, I think it came out in december 2015 so i probably got it within early 2016 because uh, it it's like a mid-range set i can't remember how much it was probably like 50 pounds or something i remember picking it up on um on amazon and, it, and surprisingly it came in one piece but um yeah I, did anyone watch boom doctor who boom honestly just Absolutely fantastic episode, the best out of all three. But I'll, I'll come to that, come to that in a minute. So um, just checking on eBay because I was, I was interested to find out how much um, this Lego set is worth now. I mean, I've got two sets. So as I mentioned, I bought one on Amazon for fifty pounds, and then I bought another set, which um, the box was open, but it was the bags were sealed. I bought a set for my son, and this would have been, well, it must have been maybe three or four years ago, 15 pounds, one five, 15 pounds at Hitchin Market on the car boot sale. So yeah, <laughs> so we've sort of got got two sets. But check out this uh, dusty bad boy. So so this, um, obviously this has been on di on display. You'd think they would have cleaned it, but this, is, this, this has been um, on display in someone's um, toy room. And... Um, yeah, I mean it's it's not a bad, not a, not a bad price. Eighty pounds, uh, box is a bit dented, um, but I mean, I I suppose you know if if you um if you do want to buy the set, you want to make sure all the bits are there. So for a sealed set, I mean I was I was I was checking online first, and it was saying, uh, I think these figures were from twenty twenty two, but it was saying like a sealed Doctor Who Tardis set is like um one fifty to. One hundred ninety nine pounds, which is quite a lot of money. But there are some. Well, I mean, if that's if it, this was twenty twenty two, this kind of um, information was uh, was provided on. I don't know what site it was on, but um, one hundred seven pounds with uh, five bids. That's not bad for a, for a sealed set. But there's still a bit of time to go, and then you've got this uh, this set here, fifty pounds and. Uh, Again, that's that's. I mean, that's how much it cost. Obviously, this one's not sealed, but I don't think that's a bad price at all. And uh, and then you've got um this one seven bids sealed again, seventy two pounds. So it'll be interesting to see what these sets go for. I mean, if, it all depends if you, if you want it um if you want it sealed and fresh. But at least the ones the ones that aren't um sealed at least you know they're, they're fully completed and the thing is you can buy the uh the missing parts as long as it's not like a window or a <laughs> or the, you know, the st john's ambulance sign but yeah i was i thought it would be um worth a bit more money if i was if i'm honest um yeah my my um one, one of my i mean i've got both police boxes on display but um i've only got one tardis um interior set up and i've always wanted i just never got around to it but i've always meant to go to um the lego store and buy a few spare parts because you know the you know the um the blue side the blue lightsabers um on the uh time rotor i wanted to change that to the to the red um lightsabers because because I, I, what are they called i call them lightsabers because yeah, to make it look more like uh, Peter Capaldi's TARDIS, because I just thought um, I know it's the same, it's the same set, but I always felt that Peter Capaldi's TARDIS with the roundels as well, it was just the best, um, the best version of the TARDIS. I mean, obviously, um, <laughs> hopefully, we've now got David Tennant and Shooty Gatwa's um, new TARDIS for the new series, which is just beautiful, and I'd love to see that in Lego. I think that would be that would look absolutely amazing. But um, yeah, um, I've I've one day it's it's one of those many jobs that I've uh, you know that, that's on my list to do. Um, I mean, I've got so many toys that 
toy projects <laughs> that I just haven't got around to to completing yet. But yes, it's always always something that I uh, that I you know wanted to do. And one of the good one of the good things about this um, this this actual Lego set, I mean, it's it's un- it's unbelievable that it was um it was it was like a a competition. Um, Andy Clark actually designed it for Lego Ideas. And then um, the you know he you know obviously you had to vote for it, and he you know his design um, won the competition, and then and then it was um, left to Sam Johnson, who worked for Lego, to actually kind of um, finalise the design, which is what we've uh, got now. Um, nephew of uh, Paul McGann, which I just I just love that Doctor Who connection, but I you know I'd, I'd love to see more of this. I mean. The, the, I think the, the the one thing about the Daleks, the, the Daleks are great, but the one thing about the Daleks that I hate is that the um, the, the 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 Lego um, again I don't know what the part's called, but the Lego part that fastens the plunger and the gun, it's that kind of gold Lego, and it's so brittle. I've had this issue on other um, Lego models. I don't know what it is, but it's so brittle. It, and all of my... I think I've got one Dalek that's in one piece. The other Daleks, they've kind of... Um, they're either loose or it's snapped completely. So, again, it's another... I mean, Lego would send would send me the spare parts, but it's another job on my list. I just haven't got around to it. I do need to sort it out. Now, um, so you've got the Lego sets. Not as, not as high in price as I thought. It'd be interesting to see um, what the final prices are on them sealed sets. But I've I've not looked at custom Doctor Who sets. I mean, I've seen some of the custom uh, minifigures, Doctor Who minifigures. They're all right, I suppose. Um, but I really like this um, this TARDIS. I think I think it looks amazing, and it's only twenty nine ninety five. Um, the interior of it, though, I, I don't know if that's I don't know if it opens or if that's just the structure of it, but. I think it's a lovely little model. Um, it's a obviously a, a lighter blue than the uh, Capaldi Matt Smith version, but I think I think whoever's made this has done a really really good job, and it's something that I you know I, I've never seen it before. I wouldn't mind uh, picking one of them up. I'm sure because I need to go to one of those um, you know Showmaster events. The uh, the Lego was it the brick the brick event? I've definitely got to go to one of them. Because I bet they sell these things. Because when I went to um, when I went to the uh, not not Showmasters Comic Con, but it was another Comic Con in Milton Keynes. It was a bit rubbish, to be fair. But I did buy a load of Star Wars stuff. This, I think it was about two years ago. I haven't been back. There's a reason for that. <laughs> but um, they had like Lego um, Star Wars full size blasters and lightsabers, and I thought they I thought they looked really good. Oh, um, there's a reason I didn't go to the um, Megacon um, event, Comic Con yesterday at um, Milton Keynes. It was at the you know the Marshall Arena, which is right next to the um, MK Don's Stadium. It's the apparently it's their biggest ever event they've done. I've I've been I've been there. I've been to the um, that venue before, um, but uh, to be honest, it, there's no guests there, and I kind of got the impression that it was just. Um, a glorified toy fair and some of the comic cons stalls they're all a bit crafty and just i don't know I'd, i think it was 15 pounds to get in on the door i think it was 13 pounds if you paid if you bought it online and i just thought i'd rather save my money and spend that 15 pounds on, on a on an action figure or something and the thing is i've got to be i've got to be mindful because um I've just paid that credit card bill for Florida. Um, I've <laughs> I went to collect the mania. Uh, it was only a small event, but I went there a couple of weeks ago and spent a, a little bit of extra money on Star Wars figures. And then I've got the infill pageant coming up next week. Plus, I've got my car tax, which is over four hundred quid, four over four hundred pounds for car tax, and I've got my car insurance. So that's all due on the first of June. So I've got to be very mindful. With the cash to splash, so yeah, that was the main reason that I didn't go to the um, MegaCon. But it'd be interesting to see what it was like. So I'll have to check that out on um, on YouTube. I'm, I'm sure 
someone's <laughs> I'm sure someone's filmed it but the the, uh, the minifigures for um for, for the for the TARDIS set so these you know I, I don't think these are bad prices so these um um you've got the doctor Peter Capaldi 14 pound 99 I don't think that's a bad price for for an official Doctor Who minifigure and then you've got Clara she's 14.99 as well I I've got no I've got no issues with that whatsoever but then like the brickheads so my I I've, I've I've I'm not a massive fan of the brickheads my son's got quite a few like the stranger things he's got some star wars ones but the Colin Baker <laughs> you can tell it's him these are great these are absolutely amazing uh, I I honestly wouldn't mind picking up one of these because I've seen custom um lego um, models and figures before, you know, like toy fairs. I think um, uh, a bat. I saw a battle droid and a destroyer droid. They looked really good, but I've I've never I've, well I've never looked for it. If I'm on if I'm honest, but these these brickheads just look amazing. I mean, imagine like if uh, Lego produced like a I don't know a brickheads. I mean, how many doctors are there now? Let's be honest. But imagine if they did a set, because I, I saw the, um, on, on May the 4th, I saw the um, Phantom Menace brickheads, and I've got to say, I was impressed, and I would have liked to have picked that up. And look at Paul McGann, you know it's Paul McGann straight away. Yeah, um, Colin Baker, Paul McGann, obviously my um, <laughs> my favourite doctors. But yeah, no, really, really good efforts, and and it's surprising what bits and pieces you can pick up on eBay. But what about Doctor Who Boom? I mean, it just blew me away. I mean, the, the thing is, what it is about the about Boom and the last uh, two episodes, The Devil's Called, and of course, <laughs> that Doctor Who classic Space Babies, is that all three episodes captivated me. Now, as I mentioned on my previous video, um, <laughs> I had really, re and when I say low i had really 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 low expectations i wasn't excited for the series um i don't know it just it just wasn't there's just there's been something missing and and what what it might what it might be <laughs> what it might be is that as i've mentioned i don't think that this new series is aimed at my generation which i think i think that's it's just one of those things and I know people are, are up in arms about it. I've had quite a few <laughs> negative comments about Space Babies. Look, I'm su I'm as surprised as anyone that I enjoyed Space Babies. And I, and I, as I said, I, I don't think I'll ever watch it again. But I was just surprised how much I enjoyed it. It was just a bit of light-hearted fun. Um, and you've got to kind of watch it for what it is. Um, it's not classic Doctor Who. It's not the same show that I grew up with, that I love, but it's the same Doctor. And I think um, more than any of the, well, more than any of the other episodes, including the uh, 60th anniversary, you know, Shooty's first appearance, this this episode, Boom, with uh, the Grand Moth, who's back in the driving seat, it just showed you that Shooty was the Doctor. And, and I, it was so good to see, because... You know, I've 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 missed the Doctor. I you know I've I've you know I loved Jodie Whittaker. I think she I think she was great. I think she had some. Um, it's all about the stories, and she had some um, very dull stories, which has got nothing to do with her. Um, so I haven't enjoyed. I mean, a lot of there's only a handful of Jodie's uh, stories that I've watched more than once. Uh, but uh, Sh Shooty is just. He's just an amazing actor, and and it's just a breath of fresh air to you know to see the Doctor back and to actually enjoy it. I actually, I, because of the last two episodes, I was <laughs> I was really looking forward to this. So rather than wait, <laughs> rather than rather than wait until uh, my breakfast, I watched uh, Boom at midnight, and I'm this this is still gonna take a while for me to get used to because. I kind of missed that waiting for the, you know, waiting on a Saturday at like, 
what time it used to be at like I can't even remember what time seven o'clock. Let's talk about the two thousand and five, um, series one episode one. It used to be on a seven o'clock on BBC One, uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, I I, I kind of missed that, but I've got to be honest. I think Doctor Who, without uh, and this would be controversial, but without RTD and Disney Plus. Doctor Who's dead because they they just couldn't make it anymore. They wouldn't have the budget, and um, and I, I just I don't think there was I don't, I don't think there was a future for Doctor Who without RTD and and the Disney Plus um, deal. Now a lot of people would say, well, they'd rather not have Doctor Who at all, and that's fair enough, I suppose. But um, I don't know why I'd, I'd miss not having Doctor Who around, and. Um, and it's just a bonus for me. I mean, I know it's not aimed at me, but it's a bonus that I'm really enjoying it. And and it was just a great, it was just a great story, um, proper classic, um, Grand Moff style. Um, the that the the ambulance with the um, the the AI um, going around. I mean, to me that reminded me um, of Silence in the Library. You know, the AI when um, when the 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 guys would die and they had the AI built into their spacesuits, but also reminded me of uh, Twice Upon a Time, the AI um, when you know Bill Potts when when you when you died there was the the AI who made a kind of replica of you, both written by the Moth. Um, so yeah, it reminded me of that, but they were completely different stories. The, the land, I mean, not really, not much really happened in the story. If if you're being honest about it, but it was so captivating, it was so fast paced, and the landmine straight away, you're thinking Genesis of the Daleks, but it's you know it's again it was just completely different. It was a different mine. It well you know it it, it, it you, you know it kind of um, mixed up with your DNA and kind of uh, blew everything up, and that was good because because of the Doctor and his regeneration powers and stuff i mean i didn't really understand <laughs> everything that was going on but um i just i just um i just loved it and and that's the thing um it does captivate me and i know it captivates me because i don't pick up my phone i just watch it and and it's and it's just great because it's been so long since doctor who was like that it's, it's been years and years since i could watch the story and just kind of I don't know, be in, be in the story and, and not think about anything else. And Ruby, I love Ruby. She's like one of the best companions <laughs> that we've had for years, probably since um probably since Rose Tyler. And it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a Grand Moff episode if the companion <laughs> didn't get killed. So that was that was shocking. I did, I honestly didn't see that coming. I don't know what the snow's all about though. And no one really, no one really mentions about the snow, but again, that reminds me. Well, it reminds me of Frozen, you know, let it go. But it reminds me of um, the Great Intelligence. So I wonder. I, 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 I'm sure they're not involved at all, but it reminds me of them. I'd, I'd love, I'd love Richard E. Grant to be back in this with Paul McGann. I think that would have been that. That'd be great, but I'm sure that's not going to happen. And I'm sure that nurse. Um, she she was in Brookside because I used to love Brookside back in the day. She was in Brookside. I can't remember what her character's name was, but she she had her husband. I think her husband found <laughs> Trevor Jordash under the uh, patio, or I think he helped out. And um, and she her character she she was addicted to um, lottery tickets or scratch cards or something. But yeah, no, she she, she was good, but. I did. I, I did like it, and and all the um, you know, at the end of the day, the you know, in a war, the only winners are the uh, <laughs> the the manufacturers of uh, of weapons. We all know that. So you know, I I I loved I loved that because it's so um, it's so linked to what's going on in the world at the moment. Um, I did I did find it strange though um, that it was. Uh, that for some reason, um, the Doctor and Ruby, I mean, one minute they're, uh, you know, it's Christmas. The next minute, um, it was, I think she said in the last episode, 
she said it was, oh, it's, it's June. I think she said it was June or July, which I found strange. I mean, it's, not, it's no big deal. But I found it strange that she was saying June, July, when it's still May. So I wonder if the episode or the series was due to start later in the year. I don't know. But now, with this third episode, it's her first time on an alien world, which was lovely to see, to, to see her reaction. But they've now been together for six months, which... Um, that's quite a jump, but um, but I suppose that in episodes I don't usually mention how long it's been, so you kind of use your own mind, I, I, unless they're kind of going to go back and do a kind of a prequel to an episode, I, I don't know, so, but I, f- I found that strange, but I found the whole um, story fast-paced, loads of tension, captivated me for the whole 45 uh, minutes, Loads of nods to the past, um, (laughs) because it was the Grand Moff, fish fingers and custard. Um, I just, I just loved it, and and um, it was um, Shooty's best performance. I think it was uh, Ruby's best performance, or or Millie Millie Gibson's best performance as well. And I loved the emotional connection she has with the Doctor. Something that was missing with uh, with Jodie, and again, it wasn't Jodie's. um, it wasn't Jodie's fault, it was just the way the uh, writing was done, you know, the uh, she was kind of distant, and then and then she was almost in a relationship with Yaz, but, you know, I'm not going to knock, knock Jodie, I, I loved Jodie, I thought I, I thought she was a great doctor, but there's something, there's something nice about this, uh, this new series, and I, I don't know what it is, I, I, I think it's because I'm just surprised how much I'm enjoying it, and um, long may it continue, but that's the, that's, the, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. It lets me know you care. It also helps the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.